membership found in your bulletin. The heaven is declaring God's glory. The sky is proclaiming his handiwork. One day dies the news to the next, and one night informs another of what needs to be known. Of course there's no speech, no words. Their voices can't be heard. But their sound extends throughout the world. Their words reach the ends of the world. Let all the words and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. standing for the prayer of the day found in your bulletin. Almighty Father, you are the Lord our God who brought us out of the darkness into light. We shall have no other gods before you. Grant us courage to walk with you, to follow you, even in this wilderness journey, that we may have life in abundance. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, our God, forever and ever. Amen. for illumination can be found on page uh, six in your United Methodist Temple. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. Make us hungry for this heavenly food that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The Old Testament reading for today is Exodus uh, chapter 20 verses 1 through 4, 7 through 9, and 12 through 20. This from the New uh, uh, Revised Standard Version translation. 
The verses are included in your bulletin. Once more, the reading is Exodus 20, verses 1 through 4, 7 through 9, and 12 through 20. These will sound familiar. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself no, an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that which is on the earth beneath, or that which is in the water under the earth. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, male or female slave, ox, donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When all the people witness the thunder and the lightning, the sound of the trumpet and the, and, and the mountain shaking, uh, the mountain smoking, they were afraid and trembled and stood at a distance and said to Moses, you speak to us and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us lest we die. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid, for God has come only to test you and to put uh, the fear of him upon you so that you do uh, no sin. This is the word for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God.
God of grace, God of glory, God of Moses, God of Miriam, God of all of us. Let the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for indeed you are our rock and our redeemer. Lord, as the one who stands before you now, I pray that you would use me, that either because of me or in spite of me, still your word will be faithfully proclaimed and your name glorified. Through Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. Could you feel the tension in that relationship of Moses and God and, and wanting to love God with all his heart, but at the same time not sure about what he's been called to do and what is it that is in our hand that God has seemingly put there? And then what is it that's in our hand that we need to use for God's good purposes? What is it in our hand that we need to let go of so that God can really equip us for the work of being who we are? <laughs> After all, the Creator would know how His creation would be in God's mind. And the grace of it all is that God gives us a chance to participate or not. A chance to follow faithfully and sometimes be discerning in the way that maybe we're not cut out to do all of this. Oh God. This moment that we are in right now is not the end of Exodus, but we're ending the series on embracing the wilderness. Some of the things like... Hallelujah. Uh, we're, we're getting out of Exodus for a little while. Let's go to some other scripture. And some of us are like, well, you know, maybe I haven't heard everything that I need to hear. Or maybe I want to study this a little bit more. I'm not sure where you are in that moment. But for all of us, it's the right moment. You know, when things come to an end, they're not actually ending. <laughs> we're ending right in the middle Perhaps at the beginning. I don't know. What we do know is this. Is that we're on this journey with God. Sometimes it seems like we are in the wilderness. But even in the wilderness, there are mountaintop experiences like the people are experiencing in this moment from the scripture we heard earlier in Exodus 20. Now, of course, we really labeled them a little bit incorrectly as the Ten Commandments. And they are commandments, but they weren't labeled as such. The Hebrew word is word. The ten words from God are really the ten utterances of God. This, God said all these things is how it begins. Curious that God begins by saying and reminding all of us, I am the Lord, your God. Very interesting. You know, we like our numbers, you know, the Trinity, three. Uh, seven is the day of, or, or I'm sorry, seven is the number of completeness and wholeness, which means six is not. <laughs> uh, five helps us to remember that there are uh, five original books of the Bible, the, the Torah, the Pentateuch. Uh, and also, within these utterances, if we read all the verses, 1 through 20, the Lord your God, that phrase, those four words, the Lord your God is spoken five times. The Lord your God. It's almost as if God really wanted us to get that point that as we were coming together as a community that we learned, as Monica was saying earlier, that the first three utterances are about how we love God. We shouldn't have any other gods before God because God is the one who made us. That God is the one who is responsible, responsible for us being here. God is the one who has loved us from the very beginning. God is the one who knit us together so perfectly in our mother's womb. God is the one who breathed into us the breath of life. And then the last six, I realize if you're keeping score, I said three and then six, it's not quite ten yet, but the last six is how 
we love our neighbor. It's quite easy to see why Jesus, whenever he was asked, how do I gain eternal life? We all want to know that question, don't we? Don't we want to know how it is that we might spend eternity with the one who created us so particularly, so specially? Jesus says, well, what do you find in the scriptures? The lawyer repeats, well, love God and love your neighbor. That's it. That is it. Do that and you will live. We're getting a prescription for that in these moments when we are reading this scripture. It's kind of hard to see that prescription. You know, it's just like whenever a child wanders toward a hot stove and the first words out of the parent's mouth is don't. Don't do that. And may even smack her hand away. Don't. You shall not do that. Sometimes we need to hear those words out of love. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's not good for you. That's not going to help you love God or love your neighbor, essentially, is what we're saying in those nine utterances. Now, of course, the one that we left out is the only one that begins with the word remember. It's almost like we were going to forget it in the first place. Remember the Sabbath. It's also the one that includes four verses. Now, some of the verses that uh, are the utterances of God are just one line long. You shall not murder. That seems self-explanatory. <laughs> Remember the Sabbath. Keep it holy. This is good. This is a chance to connect. And the connection I made this past week as I was studying these scriptures is reminding me of the Sistine Chapel, especially uh, what Michelangelo must have painted on the ceiling. I've never seen it. In, uh, I've seen pictures of it. I haven't seen it in person yet. Yet. Hopefully. Maybe. There's one that stands out as an iconic figure of art that many of us are familiar with. It's the creation of Adam. And if you have that image in your head, or maybe you can look that up on Google later, but it's this image of God reaching out. It's almost as if, and I'm, I'm saying this, I'm interpreting the art, and I'm not an art scholar, so bear with me. It's almost as God is reaching out to humanity, reaching out to Adam, really wanting to make a connection with what God has already made, what God has already said that this is good and very good. God is reaching out to humanity, and Adam, poor Adam, he's sitting there, young face, Reaching back, kind of one hand reclined, uh, elbow this way and finger up this way. They, they almost touch. They almost touch. This God desperately wanting to connect with humanity. And just like we all are sometimes, we're a little fickle. We're prone to complain. We, we don't like the food we've been given. Where's the water going to come from? You haven't seen anything yet. I'm going to bring water straight out of a rock. We've, we didn't even read that story, but that's a good one. God's provision all over the place. And maybe it, it's hard for us to believe that water could come out of a rock. But we do know a little bit about God's provision. That we can look back at times of our life, especially when we feel like we've been walking a wilderness journey, and see perhaps where God was making good out of a place that seemed like it was just a desert that we weren't going to ever get out of this place. God is reaching out, wanting to make a connection, desiring us. You know, it's interesting, the, the chapter leading up to the chapter that Ben read earlier is um, all about God telling Moses and Aaron to consecrate the people, get them ready. Reminds me also of what a wedding must be like, where the bride is getting ready for the chance to come up and make those vows, to stand in front of everyone with the groom-to-be, to say, yes, I commit myself to you. This God wants, to know, wants us to know over and over again that God has already committed to us. I am, God says. The Lord, your God. I belong to you. 
We got a chance to belong to God. And we can choose it or not. What a gift. But while we're making that decision of whether we're going to say, I do, this God says, I'm yours. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So as you are able, please stand on your feet. As we respond together and say out loud what we believe by faith, this Apostles' Creed can be found in your bulletin. Church, what is it that we believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. be seated. And now let us collect our prayers together that with one heart we may pray to the Lord together. If there is a petition or a prayer that's on your heart, we can lift those up at the appointed time um, and we can do that either silently or out loud. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for being our God. You created each and every one of us as if there was only one of us. And if you've loved us so well, Lord, may we choose you. May our following be faithful as we attempt to trust you in all things. So God, give us what we need. 
And Lord, as you share abundantly with us, give us the courage to share with others. That we might all participate in what it means to love well. Lord, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours. Grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. And dear God, we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Now, O oh God, as we are gathered in this intimate time of prayer, we lift up to you those petitions and prayers that are on our hearts and we say them out loud or by our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, O God, that mercifully you hear us when we pray. And now as we are gathered in this space and hearing the prayers of others, we, we join in prayer with Jesus who teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. This time I'd like to invite the ushers to come forward. There's a familiar scripture that many of us know that begins with the words, For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his only son so that we might receive abundantly in life. And we know that whenever we give, we are participating in what it means to receive as well.
good and gracious God, all that we have is yours. And so this day we return back to you a portion that you've already given to us. We pray, Lord, that as your blessings go, that you might multiply these gifts, that they become a good work within our community, within the church, and within this world who desperately needs you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Now may the Lord your God, the Lord your God, the Lord your God, fill you with such blessing that you can't help but to live your life so that those to whom love is a stranger will find in you generous friends. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen and go in peace. <laughs>